Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do another video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And uh, actually, this is going to be a little bit different tonight, and it's probably going to be a very long video, probably maybe too long to watch in one sitting. So I just pray that you will, uh, if you need to, stop it and resume it later and finish the video and share this with people who need to hear the, the truth of the gospel. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know who this message is meant for, but I can tell you it's meant for somebody because God has been dealing with me to do this video for a while now. And uh, so tonight I'm going to go ahead and get it done. Um, and and what's part of what's inspired me to do this video is um, just the, the United Religions talk that's going on right now. The the you know Shimon Peres meeting with Pope Francis and wanting to develop a united religions. We can see the one world religion forming before our very eyes. And this one world religion will not be a Christian religion. It will not worship Jesus Christ. Plus, we see in the news every single day radical Islamic terrorists who worship Allah and are wreaking havoc all around the world. And then, you always hear people talk about, well, but most of the Muslims are peaceful people. and You know, there's so much call for religious tolerance right now. But not any call for the real truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go ahead and delve into that tonight and go through a lot of scripture. I've got a lot of reading to do for this one. and uh, But I pray it will bless you. And I pray that if you are unsaved or you're not sure how to be saved, that this, this message will help you. You know, the, the, the Muslim thing, this Islam thing, and how most Islam, Islamic people are, are peaceful, that may be true. The problem is, the peaceful Muslims and the radical Muslims both worship the same God, the false God of Allah who is a God that will lead both the peaceful and the radical Islamic terrorists straight to hell. Along with all the other false religions like Hinduism, Buddhism, New Age movement, and on and on and on. They are all false religions that will lead you to hell. That sounds like a very bold statement. It sounds like a very... Uh, politically incorrect in you know politically incorrect statement but this channel is not about political correctness this channel is about the truth of Jesus Christ and the truth about current events as it relates to the end times <clears throat> you know the bible says anyone that denies that Jesus Christ is the son of god is antichrist and the Muslim faith does not believe that God the Father had a son. They do not believe that Jesus Christ is a Savior. They do not believe that Jesus Christ is a Son of God. So, by definition of the Bible, that religion is Antichrist. And with what's going on with this United Religions, and you're hearing more and more about it every single day, seems it is forming right before your very eyes, the one world end time religion. And Catholicism, I was raised a Catholic. I went to Catholic school first grade through graduating from high school. I was raised in the Catholic Church. Catholicism teaches a works-based salvation. You have to go to Mass, you have to confess your sins to a priest, take part in the Eucharist, do the sacraments. You work your way to salvation. They say that you're say that their savior is Jesus Christ, but truthfully, they, you work your way to salvation. And most, if not all, Catholics will end up in purgatory for a while before the, they pay for their sins and eventually are led into heaven. And I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. And what is what exactly does Catholicism say about Islam? If you're a Catholic, this may really surprise you. And by the way, if you are a Catholic, um, there are a lot of devout, well-meaning 
Catholic people who truly love God. And I'm not saying that there are no Christian saved Catholics. But I'm saying if you're a Christian saved Catholic, you are saved despite the teachings of your church, not because of them. But what does this is the Catholic Catechism? It's a huge kind of rule book of the Catholic faith. And I'm going to read directly from it. Paragraph 841. The Church's Relationship with the Muslims. The plan of salvation also includes those who acknowledge the Creator, in the first place amongst whom are the Muslims. These profess to hold the faith of Abraham, and together with us they adore the one merciful God, mankind's judge on the last day. That is so contrary to the doctrine of the Bible, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. If all it took was believing in the Creator, why did we need to have a Savior who died on a cross? Why did Jesus come and suffer if, you just, if just believing in a Creator was necessary for salvation? Recently, Pope Francis came out and said that even atheists can go to heaven if they're good people. Again, it's works-based salvation. <clears throat> Yet, not too long after that, <clears throat> he said that there's no salvation outside of the Catholic Church. So which is it? Can atheists go to heaven? Can Muslims go to heaven, as their catechism says? <clears throat> What is it? Well, the gospel is very, very simple. And I'm going to get into it tonight. And <clears throat> Catholicism is a religion. Catholicism uses books like the Catechism, Men's Traditions, Vatican II, Council of Trent, Men's teachings and men's traditions are equal to the Scripture when it comes to Catholicism. And in reality, it seems that it, it's more important to them than Scripture. Because a lot of their doctrines directly contradict Scripture. And then you got Mormonism. Again, I know a lot of people who love the Lord who are Mormons. But they're deceived by the false teachings of their church. The Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith and, the, and these new uh, revelations are straight from the pits of hell. They're lies from Satan. <clears throat> Anything that goes, it adds to this or contradicts this is a lie. <clears throat> Again, I'm not trying to be politically correct here. I'm trying to tell you the truth. God has put this on my heart because we're living in the last days and His Son Jesus is going to return soon for His church. And it's my prayer, if you're not saved, you will take care of that ASAP, become part of the Bride of Christ. Galatians, i got a lot of scripture here guys, Galatians 1, 6-9. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from Him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached uh, than other than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we receive, let him be accursed. This is another gospel. Council on Trent, Vatican I, Vatican II. It's another gospel. Men's doctrines. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Apostle Peter says, We ought to obey God rather than man. 
I believe the Word of God. I don't need men's traditions and men's teachings and men's counsels and men's extra so-called revelations like the Book of Mormon to add to the Gospel. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. Let's look at verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Forbidding to marry. Who are forbidden to marry? Catholic priests, cardinals, bishops, popes. Look at the trouble that's caused over the years. Commanding to abstain from meats. What did the Catholics do during Lent on Friday? <clears throat> and that's just... One small example of false doctrine in the Catholic Church. Let's continue on, because this is not supposed to be about a Catholic bashing. It's about to talk about, besides the fact that there is false teaching out there, and in the last days, false doctrine is going to abound, and there is going to be a one world church that will not be Christian. This video is to lead you to the truth of Jesus Christ. So what is the truth of the gospel? The first mention of God's plan to defeat evil and save man, the first prophetic scripture is Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. To prophetic scripture of a coming Messiah that would defeat Satan and would be injured by Satan as he was crucified. Let's look at Exodus 12, 13, and it says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, I can't read my notes. Sorry about that. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I shall smite Egypt. Verse 12, Exodus 12, 13. When I shall see the blood, I shall pass over you. You will not be killed by the death angel. You will be protected by the blood. That's what God did for the Israelites when he was saving them out of Egypt. Everything you read in the Old Testament points you to the soon coming Messiah and Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. The Old Testament talks about the law and then points you toward Jesus because the, the law was given to show that we cannot keep it. That we are sinful people and we, need, we cannot save ourselves and we cannot live the perfect life. <clears throat> Let's go to Isaiah. I've got too much scripture to mark my Bible tonight. Put markers in it. I've got a lot of turning to do. Isaiah 53. I'm going to read a lot of that. Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 12. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised, 
for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a lamb before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. <clears throat> he shall also see the he shall see the sea of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Then there is a prophetic writing by Isaiah, inspired by the Holy Spirit, talking about Jesus Christ and how he would come and suffer and die for the sins of mankind. The law of the old covenant shows us that we are sinners and we cannot live a perfect life. Only Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. All of us deserve death. All of us deserve eternal hell. But Jesus Christ paid the price for us, for our salvation. Let's turn now to some New Testament scripture. Let's go to Romans. Love the book of Romans. Romans chapter 3, verses 20 through 25. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Uh, Romans 3 verse 28 says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We all know John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And again, I would reference the Muslim faith, Islam, that, said, that, doesn't, that denies that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let's look at uh, Acts. Uh, verse, let's go back to Acts. Let's go Acts chapter 16, verses 30 to 31. <clears throat> and, they, and, brought them, and, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That was the uh, keeper of the prison where Paul and Silas were being held. And 
An earthquake broke him out of prison. And the scared prison guard recognized it was an act of God. And he said to Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Let's look at Acts chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God hath raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Let's go back to Romans. <clears throat> If you are unsure of your salvation, you under, if you don't understand this, the plan of salvation and that we are saved through grace by faith, I highly recommend that you study and read thoroughly the book of Romans. Now let's look at Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over, over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Revelation chapter 22 verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride say come. And let him that heareth say come. And let him that is athirst say come. And whosoever will... Let him take of the water of life freely. Jesus Christ is the water of life. Let's continue on. Jesus Christ himself said in John 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. John 11.25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John 3.3, 3, when Jesus was talking to one of the Pharisees, Nicodemus, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let's turn to 1 John. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible. 1 John, I want to read chapter 5, and I'm going to read basically the whole chapter. Uh, 1 John, chapter 5. Whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him and beget loveth him, also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God, we keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus, 
not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Let's read that verse again. As many people say, the Trinity is not in the Bible. No, it doesn't use the word the Trinity. But here's the Trinity right here. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, who is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, we've, I've been reading a lot tonight about the, believing on the Son of God. But there's a deeper meaning to believing in the Son of God. There are a lot of people who profess to be Christians who say they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. The Bible says even the devils believe that and they tremble. So what does this word believe really mean? That's the question tonight. Who is Jesus Christ to you? And what are you, how is your life because of that? Believing in the Son of God, believing in Jesus Christ, is, there's more to it than attending church. You're not a Christian because you go to church. You're not a Christian because you try to be a good person. You're not even a Christian just because you have a knowledge that Jesus Christ came to earth and was crucified. You have to have more than just the understanding that that happened. That's not what it means when it says believe on Jesus and to be in Christ. Jesus said you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. You must repent of your sin. Get rid of the, die to self, die to the old nature that sins. Be washed in the blood, and then walk in the Spirit. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Psalm 51, 17 says, The sacrifices of God or a broken spirit, a contrite heart, a broken spirit, and a broken... Let me restart that over. Sorry about that. Psalm 51, 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken spirit and a contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. David wrote those words after it was revealed that he had had the affair with Bathsheba, and he had Uriah killed. And with a broken and contrite heart, David confessed his sins to God and was forgiven. Second Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Luke chapter 13 verse 3 says, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. 
Repentance is also talked about in the letters to the churches in the book of Revelation. Now, this is New Testament teaching to this to the churches. People in those churches are saved by grace. However, they're still told to repent. Uh, let's see, Revelation chapter two, verse five. Remember, therefore, from which thou, from which you are fallen, and repent. I will remove thy candlestick out of its place, unless you repent. Revelation three nineteen. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And the word repent means to turn from, you need to return from your sin. Confess it. Ex admit to Jesus Christ that you are a sinner and you cannot save yourself. Thank Him for his, the salvation that comes only through Him, through His, his death on the cross. Become a new, cre new creation in Christ and walk in the Spirit. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 7 because there are a lot of professing Christians who do not have salvation. And a very scary chapter of, of the Bible is Matthew chapter 7. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7, thir verses 13 through 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate... And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. That last verse right there. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. If that's not a wake-up call to make you consider your faith we're told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling I don't know what verse will do it except for maybe the next one I'm going to read but uh, this gospel of inclusion this gospel that God is such a loving God he would not send anybody to hell this gospel that uh, we all, as long as we all believe in a God, God is love and God will save you. If you're trying to be a good person, you know, God would not send you to hell. That is absolutely not the case. That is absolutely not true. Yes, God is love and God does want you to be saved. But repentance and following after the Son of God with all your heart is what really believing in God means. Let's look at Matthew 7 verses 21 through 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then, I will, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Think about that. He is talking to people there who were professing Christians. Yet he said, Depart from me, ye that work with iniquity. And he said, I never knew you. How does Jesus Christ know you? The Bible says, Draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. Jesus knows people who come to him and ask him specifically to save them, to become born again. Let the Holy Spirit come into your into your into your heart. And make you a new creature, a new creation in Christ, with new with a new spirit. Yes, you probably still sin. You're a human being, and you still have flesh, but you have totally different desires. 
and you will at least have the desire to live a holy life. Let's continue on. Jesus Christ said in John 19.30 when he was hanging on the cross and he was dying, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and he died. What did Jesus mean when he said, It is finished? He meant, God's plan of salvation is done. My death is all that was needed. Come to me for salvation. Trust in my blood. Not in religion. Not in your own deeds. But in me. I died for you. The choice is yours. Do you love Jesus more than this world? Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then all other things will be added unto you. James 4.4 4 says, Know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. And Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace you are saved through, by faith, and not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Not one of us deserves eternal life. But thank God, He loved the world enough to provide a, a source of salvation for us by sending His Son to pay the penalty for us. It's not about religious ritual and sacraments and trying to obey doctrines of men. It's not about religion at all. Jesus Christ said, depart, depart from me, I never knew you. Christianity is a relationship with God through the blood of Jesus and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That's the people that Jesus knows. The people who have come to Him with a broken and contrite heart and asked Him to save them and to change them. All the signs are here. I do this video, I do these videos, I started this channel because the signs of the times indicate that Jesus Christ is going to return soon. And that's good news if you're a Christian and if you're saved. Very, very bad news if you're not. There are two people, two types of people, and only two types of people all around the world. Saved and unsaved. Being saved is a choice. It is a gift. It's a gift of God. For all those who are willing to come and accept that gift. But it's a personal choice. Pope said not too long ago, it's dangerous to think you can have a personal relationship with Jesus. I still cannot believe he said that. Christianity is all about a personal relationship with Jesus. Again, I go back to Matthew chapter 7. And then I will pro profess unto them, I never knew you because you didn't have a personal relationship with me. And it is time to make sure that you have that personal relationship. Come to Jesus in faith and repentance while you still can. He did it all. There's nothing you can do other than come to Him and ask His forgiveness and accept His forgiveness. It's up to you now. Do it while you still can. Time is short. All the signs are here. God bless everyone.